Keeler's keyboards at the very least. I think 65% is the sweet spot, but more about that later. Tyloo will be the uh, on the offensive side here in our first game of the day. Day two of the first major in two years. 4K if you're on YouTube. Very juicy indeed. Some Die Young will be the point man up top, starting to back off now as there is a crossfire for Team Spirit here in the connector position. And that might quite work out for Dexter. He's got support coming through as well. They picked up the bomb and someone needs to collect it. He's alone now in a one versus two. You can see the angles being held. He can close the door briefly, but Chopper's making his way through before he can do that. And he will try to push him. Sama has actually collected the bomb. He's been able to smoke off the choke point as well. So things become very interesting now as... Uh, Spirit have a decision to make. He could be creeping behind that smoke. They'll hear him run away, however. He gives the audio cues up to try and plant that bomb. There is a range advantage for those USPs trying to isolate the fight. Some flashbangs as well. That, that one quite works out. You can see that it slows down Mir at the very least, but he can't get that 1v1 he's looking for. And Spirit take the pistol. I was, I was praying that someone would just stand in the smoke or something really just ridiculous, you know. But... Unfortunately, it does not go the way of Tai Lu. Really nice opening from Spirit. And again, we saw that they're quite dangerous on overpass. So I'm looking forward to seeing exactly what they're up to. We, we saw that they like to play quite actively on the CT side. You know, the Molotovs and T-Ramp and so on, as you would expect. And full uh, safe, except a couple Deagles that we see employed by Attacker and Summer. And... Yeah, you know, Richard mentioned it was a long time since he'd thrown to us. It ha I guess it would have to have last been the Boston Major. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a long time no see. So the last throw yeah. would have been that Boston Major final. That, that is a long time ago. <laughs> that good like, times. That is good times. That's uh, three and a half years ago. Oh, my goodness. So there was a smoke grenade left in CT spawn there, which may be to replenish a monster smoke later on. Dexter will be looking, he's got some support just in the right time as well. It can get awkward, even with a silence and four and those extra five bullets since it was last, uh, second last updated, Ooh. should I say. Somebody, so now nobody for round number two, as uh, two players lost for two team spirit is pretty reasonable for Tyloo, considering this is the full buy for them. So let's see what they have to offer here on uh, Overpass. I, I'm interested to see what their initial approach is. In the overpass we saw yesterday on the B stream, we saw the standard stuff taking the AWP angles away. And Dexter will be on the AWP early on here. Yeah, and you know, Dexter did a pretty good job causing problems for FaZe with the AWP. There's that D ram Molotov that's going to force out a smoke. Again, fantastic to do this. It's more valuable for the CTs. It's a win because those smokes are very important in actually getting onto a site for the T's. So if you're able to remove those like that, it's just a great, great thing to do. And you can see Dexter playing pretty defensively with Sundar Young as well at the back of bathrooms. Are we going to see a pass spot. Rider? Gets the spot for back. Oh, that's it. he spots the bomb there as well. That goes down on the ground. Nice follow-up from Dexter. And in fact, they're just going to keep swinging, James. It's Ty Lu. Yeah, unorthodox, I think, is the uh, what you, oh. how you may describe them. Awkward for Chopper indeed. And... Uh, this is such a really interesting thing. People have been talking about Tylu Dry Peaks, and again, they offer zero utility in their approach towards A, where you have to expect there's going to be an AWP somewhere. And, uh, you know, this is strange for Spirit to play against. Now we've got Stereo Frags for Tylu, which gives him a man advantage now. Sam Dayang may have his silencer poking out, blind and dead. See the hand raising towards the face. That leaves Mir in a one versus three all of a sudden. Not much for him to do, but, you know... What you're expecting, from a CT perspective, you're expecting the T's to smoke off the initial entrance to the toilets. We saw, I want to say, FaZe Clan. Uh, w their approach to the Vida was to have a pop flash for Carrigan to swing on a sniper, whereas traditionally you would stand on the fountain and throw a Molotov to take that angle away, where we saw Dexter there earlier on. But Tyloo, no grenades. No, we're just going to dry peek. We're just going to have the, the bomb carrier alone peek and give all the information away and win the round regardless. It's kind of like, um, it, remind, it reminds me of like that moment in matchmaking where, you know, you get to the site and like everyone has all their utility left and then everyone just throws all their utility. It's like, I guess I can, can use this now. But um, yeah, as we see them get to the end there, dropping the bomb on or planting the bomb and then just having all this util left. So yeah, this this thing, this could make Tyloo demons in the best of one because yes, the things that you take for granted you're not going to get from Tyloo, you know, playing yeah. Counter-Strike in Europe, essentially. Again, you saw there, just the, the bomb carries the point man alone with no trade fragger. 
But I, you know there's going to be... I mean, there has to be an AWP there somewhere. So. Well, what's odd too is that Spirit, they went to a 5 versus 3 after Dexter hit those two shots and they had the information on the bomb. I, as you say, I think just they just were not expecting these dry peaks coming in afterwards. If they adjust to that you know, expectation quickly, they'll probably be all right. Yeah, that is a rough round to win. And there were some doubts on Team Spirit from the desk that we heard. And that may be an example because you shouldn't be losing a round like that, regardless yeah. of the unorthodox situation. You've got the bomb down in front of the Viola. You can hold all kinds of angles on that. So um, that has really ruined the uh, CT economy, as we can see. Two Famases and a Scout. Got Tai Luna going for a, a vintage boost, if you will. Ooh. Very fast shot. Now, what is the response from the CTs? If they are, they must identify that th that means that there are four players essentially in CT spawn, so you would expect some kind of aggressive play. And they're still on the boost, James. Normally, you'd get off of it instantly because you expect the CTs to push once the, their spot they spot that you're in that spot. Yeah. Now, Spirit will know that at least one player will be somewhere else, but it is an opportunity to definitely take some liberties. There's going to be a significant lack of map control. But beyond, uh, you know, Team Spirit are playing the awkward positions here, like the connector area. Um, you don't want to be playing close range versus uh, force by pistols around connector if you can avoid it, especially at this point. Yeah. Like if you get down there early on, you may want to throw a molly to the other side to stop any shenanigans. But um, we'll see. That is a big pickup. Magic dropped. Almost did it again. So that's one fan mask on. That execute comes into the B bomb site, so there's no one here. So I mean, I mean, Spirit have an opportunity to save and essentially go for a second force by. Yeah. With Magic's echoing. Next round. Well, what's very strange and you know, very interesting? Oh, hang on. Oh, uh oh. This could be a weapon if something gets a good timing here, but it looks like oh, it's so crazy. It's all a game of timings. Oh, he's giving the sound cue yeah. away. Some die young. This could be quite interesting. He's able to find something here. Again, so many sound cues. Here's the reload. Now they sp they've spotted him. There is a kit for Mir, but I can't imagine. They're going to go. Oh, oh my god. My god. <laughs> Just the drive by whilst the smoke's down. I don't know if the bomb will send the gun in his direction somewhat from that range, but uh, yeah, Mir doesn't want to outstay his welcome and lose the rifle. So maybe time to fall away. Some Dayang not going for that rifle. I think that's pretty smart as well. So again, it's a second force buy essentially yeah. for Team Spirit next round. A uh, quick note as well the, the, the four man boost against the pistol round is actually something that in theory is quite unfavorable because you don't get massive value necessarily from that pick but what you do give up is if the other team is you know that when they spot that they can just push the map like crazy and with the pistols that's a great advantage to have so you normally want to try to do it in a way whereby your opponents aren't able to take advantage so they're playing a passive gun round that's what you've conditioned them into is usually a, a spot where it's particularly good so I'm curious, how, yeah, I was going to say, like, I'm curious how many more times we're going to see this, because, like, again, if, if the other team catches wind of this... Oh, oh there we go! <laughs> I mean, hey, he's going to get the pick from it. And what's the response? No one's really poised to respond to this, so that's going to work out wonderfully well. Yeah, I feel like even with the kill, it is an exchange there. They get a frag, Team Spirit gets some map control, so they take short B for free. And, uh, but it's still very passive towards the A bomb site. Again, you don't want to get traded in a, in a 4v5 situation. That's just going to be more and more unfavorable for you. So we'll see what Team Spirit are, are able to do. They have two smoke grenades. So see what their approach is. If they uh, just try and hold, you can see they're holding toilets essentially. So holding one part of A, it can be pot flashes to have a look towards long A later on. Dan King's waiting for a second peek. He's looking for that information because the longer. No one's looking at long. More of a concern it is. So surely, eventually, someone's going to have a look. And maybe Dex is on his way to do that. Back here in the bathrooms. Oh, this is a little bit sketchy. Oh! oh ho, ho. Some die young gets the trade fragger. And that spells desperation. Trouble absolutely here for Tyler as they try to storm this A site. They've got limited time now. Only 30 seconds to go. Now the bomb is on the floor. And, well, Dan King's not in a particularly good position. A one versus four. And, the, you know, they got that initial pick at the beginning of the rounds with the four-man boost. But now, Dankin, it's all he can do to hold on to the AWP. And this is not how you do it. Magix will be Absolutely able to get that. Not. And that's a shocking, shocking conclusion. Yeah, it's a good start, but uh, a bad finish for Tyloo. And I do wonder if there'll be some hesitation 
as they approach the toilets in such a course. For anyone uh, who's new to overpass, the, the CTs can obviously, they can make an aggressive play towards the party if they get Molotovs towards the playground area. They can go even further than that, try and make a play around Fountain. They could have sneaky setups around the toilets. They could also be playing from the site. But these things need to be identified in the safest way by the T side. So it can take a while to emerge. And as we saw, even with that early frag from Tyloo, they weren't really able to get anything else from that round. Huddling up on long and not really getting that peak they were looking for by Team Spirit, as you can, as we saw, the action happened in toilets just before, um, I forget who it was, maybe Dexter, who was about to, it looks like he was intimating to have a peek towards long, so entirely not getting what they uh, wanted from that situation. Won't be going for the four-man peek on this occasion, or, but they will be doing something else, it looks like. Got some grenades being deployed as well. Sewers control from Spirit. They do like it. And Mir's able to get into a sneaky spot. And oh, Surprise! wasn't expecting three players to emerge from the Sewers pipe. Chopper on position of sight. It's anticipated slowly to drop down. So it's looking quite good on the defense so far here from Spirit. Looking to deflect Tai Lu. Oh, they're not getting those opening kills that they need to really secure, solidify that site control. Now they're in a three versus four. Don't have the map control they're looking for. There's time, but how do they get an opening? Because Spirit are not going to give them one for free. Look at this crossfire. Dan King could get a frag here. And that'll make it a little easier for him. Pulls the knife out, though. But he was behind cover, so that is an uh, awkward decision. Somebody trying to uh, even the numbers once again. He has been heard, though. I'm pretty sure Chopper up close will be deleted. And Magisk is down as well, leaving Dexter on a one versus two. He has some semblance of an angle. He hasn't revealed his position yet. I do not believe. Hacker on the way in now. They look to plant the bomb. 30 seconds on the clock. Dexter being patient. Spotted one of them now. Somebody trying to cross to the site. Attack down goes attacker into a 1v1 situation. There are grenades to deploy. That'll certainly help. Maybe a chance for a penetration kill now. Won't be needed. A clean shot from Dexter and uh, Team Spirit will find themselves with another round. Yeah, Tyloo were dangerous, man. You know, that was really scary. If you look at that scenario after the initial push fails, it's, I, th I believe it was a four versus three and there was no site control. Everyone on Tyloo's end were, were stuck around the sewers position and not looking like there would be a way in. But then suddenly you blink and Tyloo are in a two versus one. So right. it, it doesn't seem to really matter <laughs> you know, if, they, if they're still alive and they can still you know, fire their gun, they, they're going to be a problem in some of these rounds because this shouldn't really have on paper come down to Dexter having to clutch, which just speaks volumes in terms of stylistically what we can expect from this matchup with, with a team such as Tai Lu. Yeah, I think, I think Tai Lu on the T side you could describe as sudden, which is quite scary if they can just suddenly emerge in an area with three people. So again, you think you might get a warning by some uh, some commonly accepted utility, if you will, but that's not necessarily the case with Tyloo. So uh, you really have to be on your toes at all times. And that has been costly, at least in terms of money for Team Spirit, but they're doing okay for now. They have lost Mir in this round, and there are four man on road for Tyloo. So there is still damage to be done here. We'll see if they've got the headshots, as of course that Desert Eagle has been nerfed. Three shots to the body now, more or less, rather than two. So uh, you will need to uh, consider your aim a little longer. Uh-oh. That's not good. Dexter goes down. That's an AWP available for collection. Oh, okay, then we will have to clean up squad around party, and that's going to clean things up mostly. But that's the main problem. Somebody 16 HP, and the AWP is in hand. Make this magic so from the back. Uh-oh. <laughs> I thought when we swapped perspective there that I was magic starting to the AWP, but... There you go. 5-2, and after all said and done, you know, we've had some some close rounds, but Spirit finally starting to pull away. Well, the rifles are out again for Tyloo now. I'm, e I'm excited just to see what they offer this time. We've seen dry peaks towards A, point man carrying the bomb, no trade bragger. We've seen dry peaks, three men in the short B tunnel, which uh, there was some unfortunate timing for Team Spirit, I think. Whoever was in short B conceded his position with the tip of his gun as well. 
But uh, what do they expect now? Very passive towards A, our team spirit. And maybe they're focused on having a fast rotation if Tyloo go for some more early shenanigans once again. But it seems that Tyloo may change the pace in round number eight. As they've got an off angle being held by attacker in connector. Standard affair there. You don't want your short B players getting pinched. Nice flashbang, but somebody is staying close to the tunnel. So he will uh, not only avoid any action there, but also not reveal that someone is in the short B area. I love that grenade because it covers the high ground and the low ground. I just wish we had that in a combo with a pop flash. So anyone moving forward was blind. Free kill. Never seen it though. But there is an aggressive take and they're taking the game away from Tyler in that respect, which is strong as well. Now one minute info play from Spirit. They are active. They will make these info plays in the mid round. We, s we saw that on the previous over pass they played against FaZe. And Tyler, they've gone with a really slow pace here and Looks like Spirits are going to actually leave Magix in an off angle. And it's going to work out. Catching Attacker. And now it's going to be that swing from Monster. That ever powerful right eye swing. Slowly leading the way. And Chopper's around the corner. And he's got assistance as well. And it's not looking good here for Ty Lu, But slowly with a triple kill. It's now making things doable. Two versus two after all said and done. But the time is certainly of the essence here. That incendiary could cause problems. They've got to find a way to plant the bomb here. Great flick again from Dexter, leaving just Summer alone. There's no time. Has to plant in the smoke. There's no choice. And he will get spammed. Sumner Young is ready to go. And another round in the bag for Spirit. It's so absurd that Tyloo get that far with a triple kill. However, that peak from slowly, I think, has to be very questionable with the bomb and about 13 seconds on the clock. That's not a fight I think he can afford to necessarily take with a smoke up on the site as well. That's your opportunity to plant the bomb. And here's the peak, 13, 12 seconds on the clock. Down he goes and then that pretty much concludes concludes the round for Tai Lu. But again, they just, they just keep finding some can opener, which gives them a late opportunity, gives them a 2v3, a 3v2. That one's not going to go in their favor though. And the lack of bomb plant will uh, make it even more difficult to to buy in this one. And as we can see, bigger leading Renegades by 7-0 to zero on Stream B. So if you want to look into that Inferno action, then off you go. But we're going to stay here, of course, with Spirit versus Tyloo. Six for two to Team Spirit. And maybe now that uh, Tyloo are on Eco, maybe they can start to try and build their economy. We can see Mir's got only $50 in the bank here. So things uh, have been rough for Team Spirit despite the score. Yeah, I think they'll be really happy with how the score looks and how hard the matches oh, look so boy. far. And that is just, I mean, that's it. It's just, this is how Tyler are playing. They're going to run and gun and group up here with the pistols, looking to try to take position. But Spirit happy to fight around sewers. They love the sewers battles and they're going to win it once again. Danking and Summer remain towards Monster Tunnel. And there's not a lot that they can do here. But now the bomb's down as well. And once more, Team Spirit looking pretty comfortable. Summer looking for somebody who's... Okay, well, they're going to double peek him. Yes, great stuff there from Spirit. Well coordinated. I'm really liking their overpass so far. They're making Tyloo look... Uh, it feels like if Tyloo had the extra steps tactically, it would feel like it would be a much closer game. I wonder if Tyloo will mix it up by throwing some grenades towards a like throwing some <laughs> by throwing some grenades <laughs> yeah <laughs> well hey, we have seen some towards short b at least um so they're not, they're not completely missing but uh, we'll see what they have to offer here in round number 10 five round deficit now got a flashbang to force the awp away from the initial angle so that's promising and again they've got a consistent um presence in connector however that smoke that's been deployed by the cts yeah. well it's on the door so not so bad. But again, some CT sides will uh, throw a HE towards that door, which makes it really hard to hold the short B position. And that might be something to consider versus the likes of Tyloo. I do really love that counter smoke indeed from the CTs and connector. It's it's all gone now, but just slows things down for Tyloo would force them to take more time or possibly invest more utility to clear some of those positions around connector. And all the while we have a very passive play from Spirit on the defense. They've got Chopper, who's towards the long side of bathrooms, and that's the most forward position. But otherwise, it's a very reactive setup here from Team Spirit, and they don't have to use much of their utility because Tai Lu are not aggressively taking position. So Spirit might be able to hold on to all of their util until maybe the 30-second mark when Tai Lu start to finally pressure the site, and they're getting closer now. 
and Dexter, he's ready. <gasps> Chopper, he's going to find a timing, but Danking's <laughs> ready. Oh dear, now the grenades are streaming in. So one thing is, Honey don't really telegraph their um, intentions. Dexter, he's found two so far, trying to isolate these fights now. 25 seconds, he has support from Sam Dayang, spots the barrel of the gun. But uh, Sam Dayang will do the favors there. Somebody creeping now, is this a two versus four for Tyler? We'll see if they've got anything else left. We know they like these uh, late resurgences. And here's another one, a 2K for somebody. Where is the bomb carry though? Dan King still on the way, nine seconds left. The smoke is up and he m might just find an opportunity, but no. Two man spray down for Mira in the smoke. And again, they they shred two or three players, Tyloo. But uh, it is 8 2 for Spirit as they can't finish off the job there. Just running out of time means desperate measures and they won't work out for them on this occasion. Yeah, you can see this is a great demonstration that if you allow Spirit just to play really passively, uh, then and they're able to hold on to their utility, they're able to allow Dexter to get some of these peaks, then they're going to be fine. You know, it, really in this case, we need to see Tai Lu finding more value earlier on by use of that utility, taking away positions, pressuring positions, forcing out rotations from Spirit. But right now, Spirit are just comfortable. They don't have to do anything but just play passively. And that keeps the, the game real simple for them. Very curious to see how this one works out. Oh, there's a clue. The voice of Flashbang, but completely whiffs on the first player. SNM4 to be collected and look at the numbers now. Trying to swarm the site. Mir looking for a spray. He's going to have some trouble as well. And it, Chopper really needs to deliver now. He's got Dexter on the way who can't quite get the kill. And Chopper's desperately trying to hold on with the USP. No time to reload. And uh, how we've got to this point again, I don't know. But Dan King's found himself an AWP. He can plant for CT as well as he knows where Magix is. Now he can post up as well. It is a headshot position though, so he better be sharp with it. Magic's trying to bait that shot, crouching as well. <laughs> Jack in the box and he will just about survive. Every round looking dangerous. However, every round more or less being won by Team Spirit. That was a great peek from Magix. That was, that was awesome to see from the perspective of Dan King. <laughs> Very difficult to deal with indeed. Indeed, another round for Team Spirit, but I agree with what you said. It, it kind of felt like it was kind of insane that Tyler got it down to a 1v1 into a place where they could get an after plant because it definitely didn't seem like they had much to work with. But of course, you know, we got a few whiffs here from Spirit and opportunities started to arise. But, you know, Dexter still on the AWP. Uh, the economy is still more than good enough. That for whiff. Spirit. That whiff looks like he his mouse was in the corner of his mouse pad or something. Like he didn't have the the real estate to to track properly, which is awkward. Yeah, he was kind of running a bit as well, and yeah, it was all just a bit messy. Yeah, he just couldn't keep up. Might be uh, two lower sends for that proximity. Somebody to run past you in the smoke. I don't know. But either way, there's a seven round lead for Team Spirit, so not too shabby. Now, what we just saw from Dexter is the faster way to throw this Molotov, which, you know, the faster you can throw it, the uh, more likely you're going to catch T's before they are beyond it. I need to learn that one. I'll have to check the demo later on. Yeah, I like this deep position from Sunday Young. We haven't really seen Spirit doing this, and it's great because it's just such a fantastic check of information. If Sunday Young spots anything, he has so much so much warning for his teammates to rotate to support towards that a side if necessary and at the same time he's got so much deep information he knows that tai Lu, he can call that tai Lu. unless they're going up connector stairs they are not pushing towards the a side of the map so his teammates can safely be stacking on this b side of the map on that b site but we know it's spirit around the one minute mark they usually like to make info plays and well that's some information for some die young gets that pick smokes so he can cover his retreat and just 50 seconds left, and there's so much info for Spirit. They've got the five versus four. Tai Lu are in a spot where they're, they're sp the, the bomb is down towards T-spawn. They're committed towards B at this point. They don't really have much of a choice. But Tai Lu, they have a way, James, of finding... They can shoot their way out of a lot of problems, and maybe this is another one of those. Yeah, even when they are late on seconds and... 
As we can see, Team Spirit have held on to some crucial utility, which will just slow things down, just make things even worse. Tyloo now down to three players, so looking for their opening kill with 17 on the clock. The bomb's on the floor now as well, and I don't know if they're going to throw good money after bad here. Seems that may be the case. Attacker now on a one versus three with nine seconds, maybe focusing on damage. Can't get that longer range spray. And Team Spirit make it to double figures versus the likes of Tyloo. I'm not sure when Tyloo last won around. If we could see the scoreboard, that'd be really cool. Just to see uh, when their last round was. Yeah, no, it's um, what a, what a fantastic punish of the fact that Tyloo are not really doing much in the way of defaulting. That Sunda Young is able to go very deep with this position, which gives so much info and a massive advantage for, to Spirit Thank for basically you. no cost. So eight rounds in a row for Team Spirit. So Tyloo are at maximum loss bonus. If they plant the bomb, they've got a uh, 4200 each round. So they can buy. If they don't plant the bomb, it may be a different story. Depending on what's in the coffers. But they've got to find a way to yield some success in these situations. You can see the bomb is in the playground at present. I think it's stylistically, you know, Spirit are putting on pressure so that they can play defensively more effectively, but Dan King actually kind of lurking through the connector smoke. I think hit a great timing and he's opened up that A side of the map. Very, very scary stuff here for Spirit. And Tai Lu are playing the rotation game. They're going back towards the B site. And of course, Spirit have rotated to A, but eventually, I mean, if they're going to figure this out in time, Magix is going to delay this with the incendiary. I don't know that they have a smoke to stop that from slowing this down. Magis could actually buy time for his teammates to get back on site in time. Can he do enough here? Able to, well, he's going to go down to slowly, but he has allowed Chopper into the site, but they're not winning the battle. Spirit will be deflected. Yeah, this is a huge round for Tyloo because obviously they need all the rounds remaining in this half. Looking at Mir's money, it's not great. And I imagine the rest may not be much better. So there's a chance that they could potentially Great team spirit. We'll see at the beginning of the next round what the money looks like for them. But Mir certainly needs to hold on to this weapon. One versus four. I'm sure he doesn't know how low two of these players are, but still very, very unlikely round for him. He has a kit. I don't expect a ninja, but they are running away, actually. Yeah, he's not going for it. He's just going to sit in the corner and chill. Little does he know he could have won this round because... They abandoned that bomb like a child outside a hospital. Third round on the board for Tyloo. It's been a while since they were victorious. And as we can see, the money uh, is here and there for Team Spirit. They can buy. Dexter and Magix had about 6k, I do believe. So they'll be all right for the most part. Yeah, very solid. And in you know, a Tyloo, for me, I would ex I would want to see them get a pretty solid T side, just knowing them stylistically. Summer's having a rough game. Two kills. Yeah. It is tough. Spirits have that deep position on Suez again in that cubby. And playing sort of the bait game, meaning, you know, kind of tacking some bullets through the wood there. It's not... Okay, well, <laughs> somebody has spotted the infiltrator. Ooh, in the window. I thought he was going for the window. Attacker would have been in trouble here, but he's in trouble anyway. Tom Dayong has the angle. Down he goes. And that's going to advance things for Tyler. They no longer have eyes towards the B-bomb site, as we can see. So the urgency rises, and Dexter is potentially going to see a lot when he peeks. That's a nice flick onto Dan King. Very important kill. Looking for more now. He definitely saw a shoulder there. Goes for the toilet uh, smoke. So where, where he's standing now, essentially, uh, some people will drop a smoke there instead, which gives some nice defense and uh, stops the split, gives you more area to stand if a push is coming. But the push isn't coming just yet. Yeah, and, and this is a very difficult map too when you go towards that A side of the map. If, if, you're, not, if you're not doing proper clearances with the utility and so on, you're going to get bogged down by the Yorpa on the defensive side if for Team Spirit. And, you know, we've seen that Dexter is reliably hitting those shots. If you, if you don't flash him off the angles, he hits the shots. And Tyler of running out of bodies, there's too much distance. So going back to this B site now, and we'll see if that will be successful. The incendiary is going to force out Magix, but he's going to get the pick up as he falls out of that position. Somebody able to convert, though. And this is there time for this? Oh, it's very close. It's three and a half seconds. 
And no, it's not he, gonna work out. He thought he had the bomb and ran to the site and realized he didn't have it and had to go oh. back and get it. And that's the difference that stopped him from being able to plant the bomb in time. Very unfortunate for Tai Lu as we move to the last round of the first half. They only have three rounds on the board, so overpass is looking difficult at the moment. If they can win the pistol, then who knows? They can uh, control the map with an AWP. Somebody with another 2K. Multifrags have been important to give Tai Lu opportunity, but they've rarely been converted. Oft been converted, as we can see. Yeah, Mira's ready to go. He hears all the stepping toward the sewer position. They're going fast here, Tai Lu, but they're being once again deflected from this B site. Violently so, Magic's able to also just hold down the monster side of things too. So Spirit, really nothing to worry about here. And once more, Tai Lu stuck outside of the site, not able to convert against those initial, initial kills. And then a two versus five. It's a desperate look here for them on this first half. Spirit have simply just been in their comfort zone just the entire time. <laughs> oh my, that was great. That was great. You can, you, he completely understands what somebody's doing there. So you have to know. But uh, Magic still peeks into it. And you don't want to do this versus Tyloo. Especially when Dan King carrying the bomb. But Mira is ready. Fast on the trigger finger. 12-3 scoreline for Spirit. That is a stonking round. Half. Uh, yeah, it's the, I mean, half round everything. Like it, it is a great, great first half for Spirit, and they did so in a consistent way. They, they, they were not as aggressive as they were against Phase, actually, because they didn't need to be in terms of what is an effective way to play Tai Lu. Tai Lu is a team that wants to fight. They want to be aggressive. Don't give them what will make them comfortable. Don't allow them to have a lot of battles. You know, we, we, we saw that Spirit was pretty methodical in the decisions that they made in terms of when they would choose to be aggressive. And they, they generally did it in a way where they were not committing to fights. They were just trying to pressure and then fall back most of the time. So they got information. And, you know, Tai Lu just had to rely on these awkward dry peaks. And Spirit were very well set up against it. I do feel for the, the more remote, the more geographically remote teams... The ones which are further away from Europe in, you know, in our current travel situation, I think it really puts them on the back foot for for a major, where you've got to catch up real fast. Tai Lu now, with the opening kill on the pistol, and again, hey, if they can win the pistol in a consecutive round, they get an AWP. I want to see what they can do, but let's see if they can win that pistol first. Mir will have something to say about it for sure. Evening the numbers once again as the rotation begins towards the B bomb site. Team Spirit swarming. Going for this balcony boost as well behind the smoke. I love to see this. Yeah, it's certainly an important maneuver. Often unexpected. Actually, it's kind of stuck there. Bomb is ticking away here. Four team spirit. Dex is so ready in that position. He is going to be the wild card. And in fact, oh, a little bit awkward, but doesn't really seem to matter. So spirit will pick up the round. Tyloo. In fairness, you know, they did stack towards that A side of the map. They had four, a four-man bathroom set up. So they were playing retake on B. And unfortunately for, unfortunately for them, doesn't work out to their favor. 13 to 3 is the score as Spirit look poised to close this one down fairly quickly. If you're like throwing your money away, then you can see the in-running odds there are almost 15 for Tyloo. I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, hey. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's uh, <laughs> worth. Not Do not recommend. Pass. Well, Team Spirit's heat map will be towards the B bomb site for round number 17. Maybe one of the last rounds in this match. We'll see if Tyler have anything to say about it. Somebody unable to escape after the CZ spray. And we're on four on four. The weapon is protected. Now, no one else is on the B bomb site at present. That is a skull on the radar for a fallen comrade. You can see there's a boost coming through behind CT. Very not fancying. It doesn't, doesn't. He can settle his aim before getting shot, so drops off. Somewhere with the MP9 now, trying to do a lot with 6 HP. Blind won't help, though. Some die young will cut the numbers yet more, leaving Dan King in a one versus one now after the headshot on the chopper. He can penetrate this wall as well, picking up the MP9, though. Perhaps he'll try to push when the plant is made. We'll see what Sunday Young chooses to do. Almost a minute on the clock, but he will full commit to the bomb plant. Dan King doesn't know that until now. 
I'm done with looking for the swing there. He is so fast with that headshot. Minimal time for Tyler to respond. Yeah, that was that was a really clean peek. Great mechanics there through from some die young. And team spirit look undeniable here on Overpass. And I mean it feels for me, you know, I was expecting them to get, I mean we, we had the benefit of course of seeing them on Overpass yesterday against FaZe. And they looked really good. Um, FaZe narrowly won that, and again, as I mentioned, I think overall it felt like Spirit played overall like better, but they, they lost they lost more clutches. But going back into this one, we've got the push here coming through from Magix on this monster tunnel, trying to make way, and he has found himself a free one. He's Ty Lude then. Dry peaks. He's been inspired by the Tylu squad and uh, we'll give them a taste of their own medicine and boy that medicine tastes pretty damn bad. Pretty bitter you might say. Team Spirit approaching match point now. Three versus one. Dan King though, one thing in his advantage is that Mir and Sam Dayang have a combined 19 HP, mostly in the hands of Mir. I've got more fingers than uh, Sam Dayang has health last time I checked. Dan King moving through now. He does not have a kit. If he threw an incendiary, he could kill somebody with it, but we'll see if he chooses to commit to this round or what his intentions are. Not necessarily clear just yet. As again, a lack of kit. I don't know if there's one on the site. He is edging forwards, however. I think Magix has spotted him now, and uh, there's a late swing and he'll die. So that means they have nothing for this round. So not really sure what the plan was there, but whatever it was, it didn't work, and it's match point for Team Spirit. Yeah, it certainly feels like there is a lack of uh, in, in the Tyloo camp. There's a lack of sort of the the depth that they need would need to really find a way back. But it is you know it is the CT side. If they can get a grip of their economy, if they can you know pick up this round and start to you know, get the AWP in play, and you know we'll, we'll start to see if there's an opportunity. But of course, this is match point here for Team Spirit. There's no buffer. There's no mistake that can be made by Tyloo. And here comes Spirit looking for a fast entry. Magix up on that short position. Trying to find that opening kill. There's a lot of tidy players here ready on this B site. In fact, all of them <laughs> are ready to go. Flashback for the boost. Perfect peak. I think he spotted one by the barrels as well. So there's information. Some information. That's a nice uh, save by Dexter. Dan King to trade. Still holding on to the bomb site for now trying to trade as best they can, and it's somebody, the last man standing, versus some die young. But where is Chopper? He's been on the flank this entire time. He is position unknown. I don't believe he's fired a shot just yet, and there is...